take a look at this Python code. See the repeating print statements inside the loop? This is bad practice. Instead of repeating lines of code, we should nest a second loop. By the end of this video, you'll know how to write nested loops and understand how they work. Let's first familiarize ourselves with the syntax of a nested loop with a simple example. Suppose we have a list of numbers and a list of letters. And we'd like to create this grid where each row corresponds to a number and each column corresponds to a letter. Your first instinct might be to create this pattern using a single for loop that iterates through the numbers list. Inside the loop, you might print the current number along with the first letter, the second letter, and the third letter in the letters list. To print these entries on the same row, we'll use the n equals space argument in the print function. This argument tells Python to insert an empty space after each print statement instead of a new line. This allows us to create a row of values. To move to the next line after each row, we add a print statement at the end of the loop body. If we run the cell, we get the grid pattern that we wanted. This works fine, but see how these three print statements in the loop body are similar? As you may know, when a program contains many lines of similar code, it's usually a good idea to use a loop to perform the tasks instead. For situations like this, where we have repeated code already inside a loop, nested loops can help simplify our code. To see how, let's create a second version of our code. We'll replace the three print statements with a for loop that iterates over the letters list. Inside this loop, we'll write a single print statement that outputs both the row number and column letter. Running the code, we get the same output as before. But our new approach with nested loops is more flexible. For example, suppose we want to create more columns by adding a few more letters to our letters list. When we don't use a nested loop, we need to add more print statements manually to create the extra columns. But if we use a nested loop, no changes to the code are needed. We can simply rerun the cell and the output automatically reflects the new columns. Awesome, now that we've successfully built and run our nested loops, let's break down exactly how Python processes them. Walking through each step will make it easier to fully grasp how nested loops work under the hood. When we run this code, Python starts by executing the outer for loops header and sets the number iteration variable equal to one, the first item in the numbers list. Next, Python moves into the outer loops body and executes the inner loops header. Here, Python sets the letter iteration variable equal to a, which is the first item in the letters list. Then, Python moves into the inner for loops body and prints the number and letter variables. At this point, the number variable is 1 and the letter variable is a, so Python prints 1a in the output box. Since this is the last line of the inner loop, Python returns to the header of the inner loop. That's important! Python will execute all iterations of the inner loop before continuing with the rest of the outer loop's body. In the second iteration, it updates letter to b and prints 1b. And in the third iteration, it updates letter to C and prints 1C. After the third iteration, Python returns to the inner loop header. Since there are no more letters in the letters list, Python moves to the final print statement in the outer loop. At this point, Python has completed one iteration of the outer loop and three iterations of the inner loop. The second iteration of the outer loop works just the same as the first except now the number variable is assigned the value 2. This means that when Python executes the inner loop, every grid entry that is printed will start with a 2. Similarly, when Python returns to the loop header after the second iteration, the number variable is updated to 3, so every entry printed by the inner loop starts with a 3. Awesome! Now that you understand how nested loops are executed step by step, you might be wondering, when should I use nested loops in my own code? Nested loops are incredibly useful when working with multi-dimensional data, like our numbers and letters grid here. For example, if you have student test score data in a spreadsheet, you can calculate each student's total test score using a nested loop. 
You'd use an outer loop to iterate through each student and an inner loop to iterate through each score, adding each score to the student's total and outputting it. Or you might want to convert a color image to grayscale, pixel by pixel, using a nested loop. In this case, you'd use the outer loop to iterate through each row of pixels and an inner loop to iterate through each pixel in the row, applying the grayscale operation to the pixel at the current row and column position. If you're curious about how this works, we've left a link to some example code in the description. But be careful. These types of repeated operations quickly add up, which can make nested loops slow to run. If you're using nested loops to process a large data set, you might want to consider parallelizing your code. By parallelizing your code, you can execute multiple iterations of your loop at the same time, drastically improving efficiency. If you're curious to see how this works, we've left a link to our video on parallel processing in the description. Awesome, now you understand how nested loops work and when to use them. With this knowledge, you can confidently use nested loops in your programs. We're working on lots more Python explainer videos like this one, so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to learn about, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching!